on immunity. First, hypoxia induces death of cells called apoptosis. The corpses of the cells, so to speak, or debris of the cells are cleaned up by phagocytes, the important member of the immune system. Imagine about it, under long-lasting bodily hypoxia, which can be brought about by poor RBC quality. There are plenty of cell deaths arising every minute, and the phagocytes are caught in to clean up the debris. Cell deaths induced by hypoxia is obviously a waste of bioresources, and the phagocytes cleaning up the dead cells are the waste of or exhaustive to immune reserve. What's more, phagocytes die upon completion of their job of cleaning the site. For a valid immunity, one should have a bumper reserve of immune resources always ready to defend against invading pathogens. Obviously, hypoxia weakens one's immunity by wasting immune, immune reserve, just like explained above. Second, hypoxia makes the liver less functional, just like I explained at the previous section. Liver is an important organ that synthesizes most of the members of a complement system, which is indispensable arm of the immune system. With a liver struggling to barely synthesize complement members, one's immunity is severely compromised, especially under intense attack by pathogens. Thirdly, I want to talk about adaptive immune reactions where immune system can eradicate pathogens with a high efficiency. I observed several cases of adaptive immune reactions on users of exosoftazil in the past 11 years. All of them were frail, implicating brimming number of pathogens inside the body. These observations lead me to think that a triggering of adaptive immune reactions requires at least two conditions. One, increased oxygen delivery. The other, significant number of pathogens inside the body. Adaptive immune responses share following manifestations. Uh, lazy, sleepy, feeling cold, fever with a body temperature lower than 38.5 degrees Celsius. Phlegm can be felt deep behind the sternum because when you cough, you will unknowingly put one hand on the place where your sternum resides. Time it takes to complete the reaction is in the range of several hours to three days or more. Upon initiation of adaptive immune reactions, all you need to do is taking full rest and a full sleep. Don't try to bring down the fever as long as the temperature is under 38.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, in the course of adaptive immune reactions, immune system may commandeer most of bioresources of the body. That's why you feel lazy and sleepy. And at the high temperature, immune system is uh, supposed to work with a better efficiency. That's why there is uh, always fever arising in any kind of immune reactions. But the temperature should be less than 39 degrees Celsius, otherwise it is harmful to the lungs. Okay, so much for the immunity. Let's move on to the last section of this lecture, hypoxia on insomnia or sleeping disorder.